I am really excited to announce our next two speakers. So one currently serves as the Director of Cyberspace Innovation for the US Air Force, and the other is the other serves as the Chief Operating Officer for Project Kessel Run within the US Air Force. So if you know anything about developing software in the federal space, uh, you know that it can take almost two or three years between the time software is considered done until the time software can be released to users. And that often is due to something called authority to operate, which is uh, effectively all of the controls that say you can release this software to users generally results in a stack of paperwork about this tall. Uh, so this talk and the, the reason I am so excited about these two speakers is really important because I think one of the things that is so revolutionary about what the Defense Department is doing is creating an automated and continuous authority to operate process, which means that you can go from developing software to releasing it in a classified environment in less than a day, which is an incredible way to transform the way the world is building software. Uh, so please join me in welcoming Laura, Lauren Knossenberger and Brian Kroger. Good morning. So I have to tell you, two years ago, I was an entrepreneur. And you know that story about the entrepreneur that has the idea on the bar napkin, and the next thing you know, they're just making millions. It's been an amazing job. Who's heard that story? All right, wonderful. So my bar napkin actually ended up on a PowerPoint presentation at the Pentagon. And the next thing I know, I'm in the Air Force. <laughs> so, but it's been a really wild ride. And meanwhile, we have Captain Kroger here. Um, and it, it, it's so funny, actually, to be right next to Brian in uniform. I'm used to seeing him in a Star Wars t-shirt um, and uh, you know, with, with some really colorful hashtags uh, with, uh, for Air Force innovation. But Brian has done an incredible thing in partnership with Pivotal. He actually has created a startup within the Air Force um, called the Kessel Run which is named for the smuggling route in Star Wars. So if you're having trouble making Agile stick in your organization, you can do what they did. They literally smuggled it into the Air Force. That was probably the only way it was going to happen, right? Yes. Um, and so we've gotten a lot of really interesting feedback at the conference so far. You know, if you guys in the DOD can do it, maybe we really have a shot. So I'm just very glad that we've been able to provide that, uh, that inspiration to you. So, and I understand where that's coming from. Um, you know, I often joke that this is an Air Force that can hit the back end of a fly from halfway around the planet. But when it comes to doing things like deploying business email, whew, that's really hard. Um, why is that, Brian? <laughs> Still trying to figure that out. But too. I spend days VPNing in, so. It's Wonderful. Rough. But, but I understand this, you know, given our history, um, I mean, we have a history of doing just amazing things in an industrial world, high capital intense uh, projects. So you may not know that the Air Force actually invented GPS. Um, we can fuel airplanes in midair, uh, had a play in inventing the glass for your iPhone, and of course the microprocessor. These are all things that came out of the DOD. But whereas GPS was first invented so that we could do uh, guidance systems for missiles, you all have done much more interesting things with GPS. You can order an Uber. You can find your way home. You know that your kids are safe. And probably some of you, you know, you look and see, is my husband really on his way home right now? You know, like he says that he is. Um, so, so these are all amazing things that you all have taken from the DOD and you just made better. But we have a really hard time going the other way. And we're trying to get better at adopting the things that you all contribute. Um, we are sort of making some inroads into the cloud. We've been really good at adopting Microsoft Word and PowerPoint. If you heard Enrique OT last year, you know that's how most of the wars are fought on Word and PowerPoint. But, but we're still having trouble getting those into the cloud. You know, we're working on it. But one real bright spot that we have found is that actually we can do agile software development, and we can do it in a classified environment, and we can do it with partners that uh, represent some of the, uh, the best of Silicon Valley. And so Brian's going to tell you a little bit more about how they have pulled that off. Um, but this is one of those places where, where everyone in this audience can help. 
Did you know that the DoD is the world's largest R&D investor? $70 billion annually. That's three times Amazon. Imagine if some of that investment was made in you. If we did more investments like we did with Pivotal and Kessel Run, where we take things that used to cost us billions, and now they cost us hundreds of millions. Um, and we can avoid things like, uh, you know, the mission is scrubbed because you erased the whiteboard. You know, that was, that was kind of how we knew where the airplanes had to go. So another thing that we want to partner with you on, um, you know, really emerging technologies in general, but, but artificial intelligence. And unfortunately, every time we talk about artificial intelligence in the DOD, we end up with Terminator. Now, the good news is we've all seen these movies too. I just want to let you know. So we, we, don't, uh, you know, we don't want to, to have autonomous weapons. We're not headed that way. We've seen the movie War Games. Um, actually, War Games led to our first national cybersecurity strategy. Uh, Ronald Reagan saw the movie, the movie uh, on opening night, and he looked at the NSA and said, hey, guys, could that actually happen? And can you imagine being the NSA director and saying, you know, sorry, sir, but uh, it actually could. You see, the guys at NORAD, they left the telephone lines open so that they could work from home. So luckily, we've, we've figured out that that wasn't the best idea. You know, we're not going to have folks accidentally hacking into NORAD. Um, but we do have a real problem in that our adversaries don't hold themselves to the same bar. So we have uh, an entire city in China where uh, the government is actually forcing partnership between the government, commercial world, and academia, where they're doing things like having artificial and facial recognition, tracking their citizens' every movements, watching your Google searches, and it's being used to target people. We want to have a better, more open partnership between the government, the commercial world, and academia, where we're working together on positive things where we're developing AI for things like um, humanitarian assistance and disaster recovery. So let's, let's predict the next neighborhood that's going to flood in a hurricane. Let's figure out the best way to rescue people in those situations. We really want to be able to detect threats in our cities and keep people safe. Because as much as none of us want to have our technology used for um, for things that we don't agree with. And I'm, I'm with you on that as, a, you know, as a, a very new person to the DOD. We all want to be safe. We want our military to be equipped so that actually we don't have to use our capabilities. And so that brings us to non-traditional partnerships. In the past, when we developed capabilities, we had two choices. We could either build it internally, or we could partner with the defense industrial base. And luckily, um, over time, we have taken a more commercial mindset. We've had organizations like DIUX and AFWorks and NQTEL and others that have forged new commercial partnerships, actually with many of you in this room. And we've even opened our doors to the hacking community. How many people have heard of Hack the Pentagon? How many people would love to hack the Pentagon, hack an airplane? I mean, it's, it's really quite fun stuff. And it's, a, it's actually something that makes us more secure. We want to know what's going on with our systems. We want to partner with you. And actually, we had one amazing high school kid that made over 100 grand in a weekend from bug bounties. And actually, this kid is now, uh, he has an internship in the Defense Digital Service. Awesome. So we want to give people that outlet. And actually, I want to give another shout out to a young organization, Code It Forward. Um, they're, they're actually one of my new favorite groups. Um, they're, they're run by college kids. And they actually find college kids who want to code in government organizations. And the best thing that I heard uh, that totally warmed my heart, it's a 19-year-old kid. And he said, you know what? I can go develop an app anyway. You know, Facebook's not that cool. What I really want to go do is code for the DoD. Now, that's awesome. I can do something for my country. And so it's really cool that you know, as much as we have to have an open dialogue about trust, and we need to use things in an ethical way, and we need to keep a public dialogue about where that line is and how we use technology responsibly, that we have a new generation that really sees that call and wants to come together as a country uh, with our allies included. So, one of the most successful partnerships that we have had is with Pivotal Labs. Um, and Brian is going to chat a little bit more about that partnership. So Captain, 
How's the revolution going? <laughs> the revolution's going really well. You know, uh, good morning, everyone. Many client stories here at SpringOne, either directly or indirectly, get at just how bad their organizations were at software development before they start on their journey. I'll be very direct that if there were an award for that, we would definitely take it home. What I'm going to talk to you about today was actually born out of the ashes of a half billion dollar project that failed to deliver any software to the field after 10 years. 10 years. With few exceptions, the Department of Defense is not good at building and delivering software. In his testimony to Congress, Eric Schmidt said that the DOD violates every rule of modern software development. And that's the perfect context to start with because I'm often asked, what is Kessel Run? Is it a program? Is it a project? A prototype? A rebellion? Not quite. Kessel Run started as an idea, and I would say now is the embodiment of this idea that the Department of Defense doesn't have to suck at building software. And despite the Star Wars connections, we're not rebels. This is not a, re a rebellion. It's a revolution bent on completely changing the way that the Air Force builds and delivers software. At a recent event, Dr. Heather Wilson, Secretary of the Air Force, gave a speech about the Air Force we need. She started her speech with the words, doing something for a purpose. And it got me thinking, because at Kessel Run, we say our mission is to continuously deliver valuable software that our airmen love. But the purpose is actually much bigger than that. This is a strategic imperative, because software is eating the Air Force. As our Chief of Staff, General Goldfein, said, the next conflict is not a conflict of attrition. It's a conflict of cognition, and I agree. It won't be tanks, planes, and ships that are the central differentiator in tomorrow's conflict. That conflict's going to be data-centric, and it will be software on every device, in every domain, that will determine the course of it. That conflict of tomorrow will have many of the same characteristics that we see play out in the battlefield that is the Fortune 100. There will be disruption. Only in this case, the consequences of disruption are much, much higher. And that's why at Kessel Run, we decided that the last place that we wanted to be disrupted was in that conflict. And we decided that we needed to transform into a modern software company. So while we set out to revolutionize the way that the Air Force builds and delivers software, what we learned was that we actually need to build a software company inside of the Air Force that can sense and respond to conflict in any domain, anytime, anywhere. We've learned a lot on that journey. We have a lot to show for it. Kessel Run has opened a software lab in downtown Boston where military members, such as myself, we take off our uniforms, we team up with civilians, and we build incredible products. We now have 18 product teams and growing. All of that's being supported by an awesome platform operations team that's running PCF in four foundations across the globe. And leadership's starting to take notice. What they took notice of first was our software delivery performance. We figured out how to make ship happen. Remember, 10 years was the benchmark. Our weekly average now, 303 deployments to staging per week, and just north of 30 deployments to production per month. Now, that might not sound that impressive to some of you, but in the bureaucracy I live in, where 10 years is the benchmark, it's absolutely incredible. For the legacy system, the lead time is actually six months from dev complete to being fielded at the first site, maybe 18 to 24 by the time it gets to the last. Now lead time is 24 to 48 hours to all sites, but we've actually figured out we can fast track that to one to two hours when necessary, and we're working really hard to make that repeatable and sustainable. What not everyone has taken notice of, at least not yet, is the unsung heroes that make ship easy. I'm not even gonna talk about our before PCF, but the platform journey is really, really hard. When we first started, it was fragile, slow to recover, we had inconsistent builds, and we didn't really have the fail-fast culture yet, and that team was always under fire. If I can offer up one lesson learned from our transformation, it's this. Don't underestimate or neglect the platform journey. If you get distracted by shiny apps, you won't have them on day two. You need a platform operations team. Despite everything, though, or perhaps in spite of it, our platform team has gone a long way of making ship easy. We have a pipeline for the platform itself. Everything is repeatable. And we can deploy new foundations under rigorous configura configuration control in as little as three hours. It's unprecedented in the DoD. But there's one more aspect of making ship easy, and I have to embarrass Lauren a little bit here. Uh, she was an early champion of ours, uh, and champions are important in the Pentagon. Uh, she was the driving force behind our continuous authority to operate that Lauren mentioned in her introduction. It's basically a formalized acceptance of our automated security compliance. Security compliance in the DoD is hard. Uh, we're talking you know, 400 to 800 controls that have to be satisfied. It's, it's difficult. We've automated that, but somebody had to accept that automation, and that person was Lauren. 
That allowed us to go fast and really fast. Uh, it might be the most innovative thing in software that the DoD did in 2018, and it came out of the Pentagon, of all places. And if Air Force acquisitions can achieve continuous delivery and the Pentagon can be that innovative, then anyone can do this. So my platform team in the audience, the NGA platform team who helps us out a lot, and Lauren, thank you for making ship easy. All that is to say that when deployment is a non-event, that enables, enables us to focus above the value line on mission capability. Jigsaw has had a lot of fame. It's our automated tanker planning uh, application. Pairs aircraft for air-to-air -air refueling. If you listen to my boss, Colonel Enrique Odi last year, you know that it initially realized $214,000 a day in fuel savings. Uh, he quipped that, yes, the Air Force does care about the environment and fuel efficiency. But as proof, we've continued iterating on that product. Now the fuel savings are double. We have to deploy less airmen to that team. And it also means less stress on airframes and air crews. And that's just one example. We're continuing to invest in that with data science and data engineering. And we think we can drive those savings down even further. So with Kessel Run, the Air Force went full agile. And by the way, the AF stands for Air Force. <laughs> that's important. A lot of people in both public and private sector say agile without actually doing agile. But Kessel Run is a spark that's ignited an agile revolution inside of the Air Force, and that completely redef redefines the future of public-private partnership. Because we actually get it, and that makes it easier for you all to partner with us. And that's important because we have accomplished a lot, but we have a lot more to do, a lot more to do. I led with the strategic imperative of continuously delivering valuable software in the next major conflict. To do that in a powerful and yet responsible way, we all need you. We need you to be a part of it, and we need your voices to be a part of the conversation. So if you believe in doing something for a purpose, building a better tomorrow, and quite frankly, changing the future of the Department of Defense, join the Alliance. We're hiring and we're contracting. You can check us out on kesselrun.af.mil. And we hope you'll join us, develop some software together, and just remember, if the world's largest bureaucracy can do this with the greatest amount of regulation, then you really can too. Thank you all very much. Thank you. <laughs>